This is a PVRNN, a predictive coding-inspired variational recurrent neural network. Good lord, <laughs> look at this thing. It's a neural network architecture my professor invented, and he really wants me to understand it. The only way I can possibly understand stuff like this is by trying to explain it, so let's -a go. A neural network gets an input and makes an output. A recurrent neural network, or RNN, gets an extra input, a hidden state at the previous time t, also known as a latent state or a context. It's like the model's diary describing previous inputs. The RNN also makes another output. It makes a new hidden state, like it's rewriting its diary. What do you do with the old diary? You just throw it away. It's done. This new diary has all the information the model thinks it needs. RNNs are useful for stuff like text or video, where it's not enough for the model to look at just the current moment. It also needs to know how it got there. But this is an open-loop RNN. Open-loop means it actually gets inputs alongside its hidden states. There is an alternative to open-loop, and surprise surprise, it's called closed-loop. A closed-loop RNN still has hidden states, but it never actually gets any other inputs. Then, wait, what? <laughs> where, where does it get information? Okay, I think it's like this. You gotta start somewhere, so just like an open-loop RNN, this closed-loop RNN has an initial hidden state. This time step before anything has actually happened yet, some call it t equals zero, but I prefer t equals negative one, whatever. Usually, this initial hidden state is just a bunch of zeros, like an empty diary. But now, the model uses that initial hidden state to make another hidden state at time t equals zero. What? It, it doesn't actually have any new information to put in here. What's the point? Anyway, the model uses this new hidden state to make an output, like a prediction. But how can the model predict anything based on nothing? Well, Comparing the prediction to a real observation, uh, a target, lets us measure an error, a loss value. And now, that loss value backpropagates. Usually, backpropagation is used to train models. The models have weights, and backpropagation changes the weights to make sure predictions are better in the future. And, don't get me wrong, closed-loop RNNs use that same kind of backpropagation too, during training. But outside of training, the model uses backpropagation to update this initial hidden state way back at the start. Open-loop RNNs just discard old hidden states. Closed-loop RNNs replace them or, or update them. So let's put another number on here. This isn't just the hidden state at time t equals minus 1. It's been updated once. Notice, the model never actually got this observation as an input. It only sees what it got wrong. And now, with this updated initial hidden state, the model makes an updated hidden state at time t equals zero, and an updated prediction. Naturally, this prediction had better be better this time. It's not a prediction, it's a postdiction. So let's move another time step forward. The model uses this updated hidden state at time t equals zero to make this new hidden state at time t equals one. And it uses that to make a new prediction of a new target. This prediction will have another loss value, which backpropagates all the way back to this initial hidden state. It's been updated twice now, and now the model goes all the way back to the future where it left off. This hidden state has been updated twice too, and this hidden state is updated for the first time. And so on. We can keep moving forward. In practice, this gets computationally expensive pretty quick, so maybe we set a maximum number of steps to backpropagate. The model doesn't have to go all the way back to this initial hidden state. It could just go back to a limit of, say, 10 steps. But what's the point of all this? As I understand, it models some biological thought processes. 
When I get new information, I don't just update my worldview right now. With hindsight, I also reconsider my worldviews in the past, and maybe that helps me understand the present moment. An open-loop RNN could replicate this kind of hindsight, too, but a closed-loop RNN makes the hindsight more explicit. You know what else models biological thought processes? Carl Friston's free energy principle. This closed-loop RNN is trying to maximize accuracy. The free energy principle says that's not our only goal. We actually want to minimize free energy, which means maximizing accuracy and minimizing complexity. That means minimizing the difference between prior worldviews and posterior worldviews. We don't want new information to surprise us. We can do this with a PVRNN. When we make this initial hidden state, let's also make a probability distribution called the posterior inner state. It'll start as just the normal Gaussian bell curve, mean 0, standard deviation 1. Again, it feels weird making a posterior before the model actually gets any information, but hold on. The model uses this hidden state to make another probability distribution, the prior inner state. And then the model uses the hidden state and a sample from the posterior inner state to make a new hidden state. As before, the model uses that hidden state to make a prediction and gets a loss value for accuracy. But it also gets another loss value for complexity, comparing the prior and posterior inner states. To maximize accuracy and minimize complexity, these loss values backpropagate to update the initial hidden state and this posterior inner state. And just like before, we can move forward like this step by step. If we want the model to minimize complexity more than we want it to maximize accuracy, it can keep its worldview consistent even if that means its predictions are wrong. If we're really attached to some opinions, we might be willing to accept being inaccurate. And hey, sometimes that's the right thing to do. If we don't believe in ghosts, and suddenly we see a ghost down there in the abandoned gold mine, we don't need to instantly believe in ghosts. Maybe it's just that old innkeeper. <laughs> Jinkies. So anyway... That's a PVRNN. Ish. Uh, I say ish because, good lord, I've asked seven people around my lab to help me understand it, and every single one of them saw it differently. For example, some of them said you don't update this initial hidden state at all. You only update the posterior inner states. So, <laughs> don't, don't trust me too much. If someone says something else, keep those worldviews of yours open to change. Let's go back to this picture of the PVRNN architecture I showed in the beginning. I hope it makes a lot more sense now. It was basically impossible for me to interpret it until I spelled it out step by step in this slideshow. But you'll also notice, this PVRNN has multiple layers. Each time step has two hidden states, two prior inner states, and two posterior inner states. Why? Because these are multiple timescale RNNs. The bottom layer can change faster than the top layer. That means the bottom layer represents short-term memory, and the top layer represents long-term memory. The model can have as many layers as you'd like. Anyway, when I showed my professor this slideshow, he accepted that I understood the PVRNN well enough. <laughs> Whew! but I'm going to stick with my own architecture inspired by the PVRNN. This one is open loop, and I think it's easier on my computer for reinforcement learning. It uses the hidden state and an action to make the prior inner state. Then it uses the hidden state, the action, and also an observation to make the posterior inner state. It uses that to make a new hidden state, and uses that to predict stuff. This can have multiple layers too and you still get accuracy, you still get complexity, and now you can throw away old hidden states and inner states and never worry about them ever again. And that's a lot off my mind. See you next time, Squidlings.
If you feel like it, throw money at me.